if you look at this uh, text in the Yiddish, uh, you will see there was a, a small town. We, we call it a shtetl today. And uh, men called it Nazareth. 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 And that's where the Mashiach grew up in order that it would be fulfilled what was said through the Nevi'im, the prophets, that Rabbi Melech HaMashiach of Netzeret should be called a Netzer, Nun Sadi Resh. Now you might wonder which prophets said that? Well, in uh, Second Shmuel, verse, uh, I think it's 23. I'm sorry, chapter 23, verse 5. David said, will not God cause all my salvation and all my desire to to sprout, to spring up. And this word is introduced as a messianic code word. And uh, we see it again in Isaiah chapter 4, verse 2. And the Messiah is spoken of as the branch or the shoot and it says in chapter 53 out of dry ground he will spring up and then after the exile when the Kohen Gadol returns whose name happens to be Yeshua Zahariah walks up to him I'm talking about Zechariah the prophet we're talking about the Tanakh. And he says, behold the man whose name, now the name of the man was Yeshua, whose name, that is Yeshua, is the branch. The Zemach, the branch. So this word Netzer, or Zemach, is very important. And here we have the name, the personal name of the Mashiach. And it's given in advance over 500 years before he's born. But before he's born, the angel says, this is the name that the child is to be given. And there's no other name under heaven whereby you must be saved. And Hasatan has vilified that name and embittered the Jewish people against that name because God forbid they should call on that name and be saved because the devil hates Israel as we saw in World War II. But there is only one name under heaven whereby we must be saved. The personal name of God that is given to us in the Tanakh is yod Hey vav Hey or Hashem. Because we don't want to use God's name in vain and break the third commandment. And this is the name of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, his personal name. But the Moshiach has a personal name as well. Now, in the book of Yoel, it says, whoever calls upon Hashem will be saved. In the Septuagint, it says, Adonai. 
because the tetragrammaton was not pronounced. Instead, a Greek word meaning Lord was used instead of Hashem. But you know what? Unfortunately, many Jewish people, when they think of this name, Hashem, they think of an undifferentiated monad, and that is not who Hashem is. And then there are these people in the oneness movement that are heretics who believe that it's the Messiah only, that he himself is all there is to God. You cannot say that. You cannot say Mr. Smith is the marriage. No, the marriage is Mr. and Mrs. Smith. You cannot say that God is the Messiah. No, God is Adonai Echad. And you get that in Yohanan chapter 10. My father and I are one. The Atik Yomin and the Bar Enosh are one. That's also in the Zohar. There is a need to correct inerrant, uh, to, to correct uh, errant doctrine. We have to know who God is. And we have to know who Mashiach is. And we have to call the name of the Lord. And the saving Lord is Mashiach ben David. It says the Lord will suddenly come to his temple. It says the Lord said to my Lord. It says all peoples will pay Lam and head the Barinosh when he comes on the glory cloud. So we need to realize who the Mashiach is. Now, there is a scripture in Isaiah which speaks of the zemach, the branch, the shoot of Hashem. And in chapter 4, verse 2, it says that there is a messianic prophecy there. In that day, it says, and it it is speaking of the sprout of Hashem, which means the son of Hashem. It's a reference to the divine nature of the Tzemach. His human nature is that he is the offspring or fruit of the earth, but his divine nature is very clear. Now, in Psalm 132, verse 17, I want to read this to you. And uh, it has to do with the Zemach. Look at this. Psalm 132, verse 17. There will I make the horn of David, the actual um, the, the government of David, to, to grow. I have prepared a lamp for my anointed. 
And uh, if you look at this uh, scripture, Psalm 132, verse 17, in the, in the Tanakh, you will see it's speaking about the, the Davidic Moshiach ben Dovid, and you will see in the uh, Hebrew, in the Psalms, uh, and I'm just going to read it right here to you. It says, Aleph, Tzamek, Sadi, Mem, Yod, Final Het, or I should say Het, I will make to sprout. I will make to, to spring up the horn of David. And again, you get this Sadi Mem Het, this idea of the Zemach, the sprout. And then in Isaiah 53, uh, you see that this sprout of Hashem that was that was mentioned in chapter four verse two of Isaiah is going to to spring up and then he is going to suffer vicariously and through this there's going to be an exchange. He is going to take our sins and bear them away but he is going to give us his righteousness. He's going to put a robe of righteousness on us. He is going to do what was done for Abraham. Abraham believed God, and God put a robe of righteousness on him as a free gift. And in Isaiah 53, uh, it says that my righteous servant will justify many. He will make them righteous. And then it says, uh, and this is uh, earlier in uh, uh, Isaiah 53, that he will spring up out of dry ground like a root uh, like a uh, actually look at chapter 53 verse 2 and you will see this idea and uh, how he will suddenly appear he would just it's like a, in the springtime you go to bed you get up in the morning and there's a little flower that has sprouted up during the night. We esteemed him not. The arm of the Lord has to be revealed. Our eyes have to be opened. Nothing but divine revelation can make the servant known to us. But he, he springs up out of the dry ground. And this is found in Isaiah 53. But when you go back to chapter 4 of Isaiah, at the very beginning of his prophecy, he's preparing for Isaiah 53. And how is he preparing? He's preparing by speaking to you about the Zemach Hashem, the sprout of Hashem, the son of Hashem. You see, Hashem is the Atikamin, the Baranosh, and the Ruach HaKodesh. The, the God of Israel, the one God of Israel, the one and only God of Israel, is 
Elohim Ha'av, Elohim Ha'ben, and Elohim Ha'ruach HaKodesh. And the Elohim Ha'ben is the Zemach Hashem. Isaiah chapter 4, verse 2. And he springs up this branch, this sprout, this savior, this son, this sprout of, of Hashem springs up in Isaiah 53, verse 2. <coughs> and he does it out of the dry ground. And he does it like a shoresh, like a root out of dry ground. And this is why you need the Orthodox Jewish Bible, because I spent 30 years studying the original language and bringing that in in a transliterated form so that you can understand what is actually there in the Hebrew, if you could read Hebrew, so that you can see the underpinning of the English words and really get the idea that's being presented. In Isaiah chapter 53, it says in the King James Version, who is believed are reported to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed. For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant. He shall spring up as a root out of dry ground, a shoresh. Then it's speaking about how he doesn't have anything about him that would attract us. And then it speaks of how despised he is and how we esteemed him not, how we thought he was cursed of God, how we thought God had cursed him and the curse on him was from God. But curse is everyone who's hanged on a tree. And, and there's a curse for everyone who does not uphold all of the Torah to do it. So it was our curse that he was bearing. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. In other words, like Avshalom, pierced and hanging on the tree, whose death brought peace. And the herald had to come and run with the peace, the good news of peace and God's glorious Basurus Hage Olah. This this chastisement that fell on him was for our peace. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God. And that's what he talks about in verse 11, that he will justify many. They will have justification. They will have peace. And in Romans chapter 5, verse 1, you get the word peace from Isaiah 53, 5, and the word justified from Isaiah 53, 11. Then it speaks about uh, Het Kadmon, because all have gone astray. All you have to be is born and you will go astray. Because there's an inherited, an inherited uh, crookedness to mankind. Yes, God made him upright, but he has gone after many schemes. And all we like sheep have gone astray. We've turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him, on the Mashiach, the iniquity of us all. Then it speaks about how he goes as a, as a lamb 
to the slaughter, which was fulfilled because when the lambs went to the slaughter on Pesach, he was going with them and he did not open his mouth. During the tribunal, he said nothing in his own defense. As a sheep before her shearers is dumb, so he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison. So he was arrested Thursday night. And on Friday morning, he was taken out of that prison and taken before Pontius Pilate and before Herod and then back to Pontius Pilate. And who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living for the transgression of my people. So here, if you say that this is Israel, you make it completely uh, incomprehensible because he and my people are contrasted. And it's not that, he, that the, the scripture does not say they are the same thing. On the contrary, he has a violent death and his death is vicarious and it is for my people. He made his grave with the wicked, with the rich man in his death. And there was a rich man that gave him his grave. But there were two wicked people who died at the same time. Because he had done no violence, neither was there any deceit in his mouth. He was without sin. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He, the Lord, hath put him to grief. When thou, and this is addressing God, shall make his soul an offering for sin and a sham guilt offering, he shall see his seed. The whole of the Tanakh is talking about the promised seed. And ultimately, this, this is the people of salvation. And they will see him. Have you been with me so, so long, Philip, and you still don't know me? He who has seen me has seen the Father. Finally, Philip was looking at him, and he was seeing Philip, who was going to be saved. And this is my prayer for you, that you will be saved. Because he was saved. The Lord prolonged his days. Look at Isaiah 53, verse 10. Even though he was in a kever, and that word kever is right there in Isaiah 53, 9. Nevertheless, he has his days prolonged. And this is an allusion to the resurrection of the dead. And the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. So the work of God is prospering in his hand. Because it was the Lord's will to put him to grief. To make a vicarious sacrifice out of him. So that everything in Judaism could be preserved, the Korban, the Kohen, Le'olam al-Divati Melchizedek, the Hehal, the Covenant, the, the Glory, the Shekhinah, the Adoption, everything in Romans chapter 9, everything that Judaism stands for, and especially beyond all else, the Tehiyas Hamasim, the Resurrection of the Dead. And this is what we have in biblical Judaism. If your religion calls itself Judaism but strays from the word, you immediately 
began to lose everything that Judaism held dear. He shall see of the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied. Here you have the satisfaction that God, who loves people and doesn't want to punish them, but must punish sin, is satisfied that justice has been fulfilled and that he has suffered for the sins of the whole world. By knowledge of him shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. He is the scapegoat of Yom Kippur. Without him, you don't have a scapegoat. Without him, any Yom Kippur service that you might want to have is missing the key elements. But you must know him personally and have a saving knowledge of him. And with that, you find justification. Abraham knew the God of Israel and he believed in him. He was a friend of God. He trusted him. He depended on him and God gave him a robe of righteousness as a result, as a gift, not as a reward for merit not any invention of his own. By, by grace are we saved through faith. This is not your own doing. It's not a bright idea you came up with. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong. In other words, after this ordeal, he will show his real strength by standing up alive from the dead. And he will divide the plunder because he hath poured out his soul unto death and he was numbered with the transgressors and he bore the sin of many and he made intercession for the transgressors. He said, Father, mm -hmm. forgive them for they know not what they do. And in Psalm 110, at the end of the psalm, after David says, and he's referring to the Kohanim because God did not ordain them with a with a, a an oath, but here he uses an oath about the Kahuna of Moshiach. And he says, "I, I have, by myself I have sworn that." Uh, you are a Cohen forever. And then it says, he will drink of the brook in the way, therefore shall he lift up his head. In other words, he will, he will divide the spoil with the strong. He will be the victor. He will drink of the brook in the way. He will lift up his head victoriously. Father, I want to pray right now for everyone, everyone, Lord, who needs to know what this word netzer is all about, the branch, the sprout, the shoot, the genealogical branch. Moshiach ben David, come into my heart, forgive my sins, take control of my life, and I will serve you, and I will follow you all the days of my life, and I will open your book. Friend, go to YiddishBible.net and open the book. Go to artistforisrael.net and open the book. Go to 
afii.org forward slash capital O, capital J, capital B dot PDF and open the book. And God will bless you when you open that book 